going to talk today about energy in electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so last time we saw, well, let's just show it again real quick. The uh, radio transmitter, so the, the amplitude or the, uh, excuse me, the wavelength of this transmitter is about a decimeter, about 10 centimeters, which translates into the uh, radio frequency. Uh, and we bring it near this, this receiver, okay, just another wire with a light bulb, and the light bulb lights up. And so we can ask the question, well, it lights up, meaning it's dissipating energy, so where's the energy coming from? It's got to be coming from the radiation, right? The radiation is from the uh, antenna is delivering energy to this receiver, and then that energy be is being dissipated away. So we're going to talk a bit today about energy in radiation, and particularly about energy stored in uh, in fields, uh, because we know there's such a thing as electric potential energy. Okay, we talked about that, but the question is, how is this energy delivered, or where is this energy actually stored? And it's really stored in the fields itself, in the electric and magnetic fields. And this is true not just for radiation, but for any uh, electric and magnetic field. And here's an example which was actually worked out in an earlier chapter, but let's do it now. Um, let's say you're charging a capacitor. So here's a, a conventional current. Here's one plate of a capacitor. So this is becoming more positive. This is becoming more negative. And of course, there's going to be an electric field in here pointing in that direction. And so there's going to be a potential difference across the ends of the capacitor or across the capacitor plates right inside the gap. And we know something about power, right? Electric power, power is energy per unit time. And what's the formula for power, electric power in general? IV, I delta V, right? I, the conventional current times the potential difference, okay? So we could work out from the formula for power the amount of energy that gets stored in the capacitor after some amount of time, because power is energy per time, right? So we can say that energy per time, meaning the rate of change of energy, and here I'm using E, we write it as En. Uh, let me use a script E here to indicate energy to distinguish it from electric field, which is going to show up in this equation. So DE dt is I times delta V. And the current is, conventional current is dQ dt, right? That's the rate of charge flow, coulombs per second. And so if I want to get the amount of energy, I can integrate through over time or essentially do the antiderivative here and just think about the differentials. Essentially, the dTs go away on both sides. And so we have a small amount of energy being equal to a small amount of charge times the delta V. Uh, we also know something about the capacitance. And this is something we haven't dealt with for a while. But capacitance, anybody remember the de definition of capacitance, the amount or the strength, the ability of the capacitor to hold charge? Say again. Not one over resistance uh, has to do with the charge and the potential difference, right? It was defined in terms of the charge and the potential difference. And the capacitance turns out to be Q over delta V, okay? So that's a formula from a while back that you might not remember. But capacitance, capital C, is Q over delta V. So I can put the charge... Um, or I can put delta V, actually, in terms of the charge and the capacitance. So I can say delta V across the capacitor is equal to the charge on one of the plates. Okay, so this charge is, if this is plus Q, then this is minus Q. It's the charge on one plate, okay, or one, one side of the capacitor. Plug this in, I have 
change in energy is equal to a change in charge times charge over capacitance. And this is an equation we could solve. This is because we can just do the integral of both sides now. We can say that the amount of energy stored is the integral from zero to some final energy of dE. And this is going to be equal to the amount of the integral of uh, dQ over, or, D, or excuse me, Q times dQ. The capacitance is a constant. I can bring that outside. So this is zero to the final charge. So I'm going to get the final energy, which I'll just call E. Don't worry about the subscript. It's going to be 1 over C. And the integral is going to give me 1 half Q squared, right? So that's going to be uh, 1 half Q squared. So I can put the energy stored in the capacitor in terms of the charge and the capacitance. If I know how much charge is on the plate and how much the capacitance is, I can figure out the energy. But I can put this in terms of the field because capacitance, if we go back to the definition here, capacitance is Q over delta V. For a parallel plate capacitor, we know that the electric field uh, inside the capacitor is the charge per unit area times the constant epsilon zero. Okay. So I can say that uh, Q then is going to be epsilon zero times the area times the electric field inside the capacitor. So I could plug that in. And then knowing that, the capacitance is going to be that charge, which is epsilon zero A times the electric field, divided by the potential difference. And the potential difference is just going to be the electric field times the distance S, called the separation S here. The electric field cancels out, and then the capacitance just depends on the dimensions of the capacitor and this constant. So let's plug all that in. We have then the energy stored being equal to 1 over the capacitance, so that's epsilon 0 area, and then we have S up here. We have a factor of 1 half, and we have the charge in terms of the electric field, so that's epsilon 0 a times the electric field squared. So what am I going to get? I have epsilon zero squared. I have A squared and I have the electric field squared. That cancels out a factor of epsilon zero. That cancels out a factor of A. So those squares goes, go away. I have one half electric field, uh, excuse me, one half epsilon zero times the electric field squared times I have a factor of S left over and a factor of A. So that tells me the amount of energy stored in the capacitor is proportional to the electric field, the magnitude of electric, electric field squared. So it's suggestive that there's energy stored actually in the fields themselves. Okay? And we, now we derive this for a capacitor, but it turns out, what's S times A? The distance between the plates times the area of the plates is going to give you what? The volume, right? The volume of the space inside the capacitor. Okay? So this is 1 half epsilon 0 electric field squared times the volume. And if I say the energy over the volume, just divide through by the volume, I get 1 half epsilon zero E squared. This turns out to be a general formula. And this is the energy density for an electric field. Energy density meaning energy per unit volume. So this is for electric fields. true for any electric field, even though we had derived it for this specific case of a charging capacitor. It doesn't matter if it's uniform, uh, non-uniform, radiative, whatever. That's energy density for an electric field. 
turns out there's energy stored in magnetic fields as well. I won't go through the derivation, but it, the formula looks similar. It turns out that for magnetic fields, that the energy per unit volume or the energy density is 1 over 2 times mu naught b squared. Okay, So the energy density for both of these cases turns out to be proportional to the square of the magnitude of the field. Okay, So I could write the total. I could say that in general, Energy density in general is equal to one half epsilon zero times e squared plus one over two mu naught times b squared. Okay. So if we have an electric field, any electric field, we have energy stored that we could make use of. Okay. If we have radiation, we already know some. Uh, rel relations between the electric field and the magnetic field in radiation. So in radiation, we know that B radiative is equal to the radiative electric field divided by C. So that's true for any electromagnetic wave or pulse. So I plug that in. I have 1 half epsilon 0 E squared plus 1 over 2 mu naught, and uh, we have E squared over C squared. But if you remember, we worked out that the speed of light, C, is equal to 1 over square root of mu naught times epsilon naught. Okay, we saw that when we first introduced radiation. And so if I plug that in, I have 1 half epsilon 0 e squared plus 1 over 2 mu naught. Uh, 1 over c squared is going to give me mu naught times epsilon naught, and I have another factor of e squared here. And the mu naught cancels out. And so I have 1 half epsilon naught e squared plus 1 half epsilon naught e squared. And so this works out to be just epsilon naught times E radiative squared. Okay, so this is for radiation only, but it works out to be a simpler formula from the, uh, from the relationship between the electric and magnetic fields and radiation. Okay. So it's just telling us again that energy is stored in radiation and it's proportional to the square of the, of the magnitude of the field. 